What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, I am a staff software engineer and I make videos talking about the tech industry. In this video we are going to talk about how I streamlined my development workflow by using GitHub Actions. I recently updated my personal website to look and feel a bit more modern by dynamically loading in my recent YouTube videos. I made use of Ktor for the back end and Vue.js for the front end. I decided to build the website this way because I wanted to have my front end code hosted through Google Cloud Storage because it was super cheap to do and then I was able to then and have my KTOR service hosted through Google Cloud Run, which would only cost money while that service was running. One of the downsides is the deployment process is a pain in the butt. If you want to know how I simplified that deployment process, stick around till the end of the video because I'm going to be talking about just that. First, I have to open the project's readme file. Then I'd navigate down to the building the project section and follow the steps for building the KTOR application. Then I'd need to dockerize the application. After that, I'd send it to Google Cloud Build so that I could also dockerize and tag the application. From there, I'd log into the Google Cloud console and navigate to Google Cloud Run and manually deploy the new container by replacing the old one with the new one. After that, I realized that I had forgotten to document how to deploy the front end code. I would kind of debate whether or not I want to just delete this entire project, but I would continue on anyway because I'm a tech influencer now, so I just, I have to do that. So then it was off to Google so I could search how to deploy the static assets to Google Cloud Storage, where I would first run the incorrect command. After realizing that was incorrect, I'd use the correct command, and about 45 minutes later, my website would be fully deployed. And of course, because the deployment process took so much time and energy, after I figured out how to deploy the front end again, I would promptly not document it because I was already exhausted so I was ready to be done with the project. So if you can't tell already, I'm a little tired of deploying my website manually. It takes a lot of steps, there's a lot of room for error, and so this is where automation comes in handy. As software engineers, there are thankfully a lot of tools at our disposal to do automated deployments. I have personally had the opportunity to use things like Jenkins, GitLab CI, Circle CI, Travis CI, and thanks to this project, I now can say that I've used GitHub Actions as well. When it comes to automating software releases, there are two things that you want to keep in mind. The first thing is you want to make sure that you build in quality gates to ensure that whatever you are releasing meets the standards that you want to have in place. So for myself, for ingle.dev, I have a couple different quality gates. One of them is a static code analysis tool, which is called Detect. It allows me to validate that the Kotlin code that I am writing adheres to a very strict standard. The other quality gate that I have in place are automated unit tests. This allows me to validate that the code still works the way that it was intended to work. This of course is just the starting point. I want to have static code analysis tools for my JavaScript code along with unit tests. I also want to have full end-to-end -end tests somewhere down the line. The second thing that you want to keep in mind is providing that all of those quality checks have passed, you want to automate the entire release process. And so in my case, this is really automating the process of building my container for KTOR publishing it to the container registry for Google Cloud, and then having Google Cloud Run automatically make use of that latest image once it's available. The other thing that I need to automate is the front end deployment, and that is a little simpler. Essentially what we need to do is we need to push all of the static assets to a public Google Cloud storage bucket, and that's pretty much it for that. So this was my first chance to really try out and use GitHub Actions. I decided to use it because it's baked right into GitHub at this point, and I wanted to see how good that integration was. Before I could add GitHub Actions, I had to do a little bit of pre-work. So I had those quality gates that I wanted to have, but I didn't actually run detect. I didn't actually have unit tests at this point. And so the first thing I needed to do was add detect. It is pretty simple to add, pretty straightforward. I also took this opportunity to write some unit tests. It's not fully test covered. I'm human, writing unit tests after the fact is super boring. And so I wrote as many as I could stomach, but it's maybe 25% covered. I also didn't add any quality gates for my JavaScript code. The main reason is I'm still pretty new to modern JavaScript. The last time I worked with JavaScript was back in 2015, and so I'm a Allowing myself to be a newbie, I will figure out which tools to use as I continue to add to the project, but 
For right now, no quality gates for my front end. Now that I had a couple of things to automate, it was time to start automating them. I needed to first figure out how GitHub Actions worked, so I found a getting started tutorial within GitHub's developer documentation, which taught three different things. GitHub Actions are also known as workflows, which can be scheduled or kicked off by one or more events. An event can be something like pushing to a repository or opening a new pull request. That event can have one or more jobs that are kicked off as part of the workflow, and jobs let you run console commands to automate everything. Don't worry if this seems a bit confusing, we'll go through some code samples in a minute that will better illustrate all of this. Next up was learning how to create actual actions. They must be placed inside of your .github forward slash workflows directory. If you don't have one already, then create one. Another neat thing is that you can have as many workflows as you want, just as long as they end in the .yml extension. Then, to put all of the pieces together, I reviewed a Hello World GitHub action, which let me see all the main pieces of the workflow. This didn't show me everything, but it was more than enough to get started with writing a GitHub action of my own. I ended up using VS Code for creating my workflows, which either already had a plugin installed for GitHub Actions or I installed it without remembering it. Nonetheless, I was happy to see that I had autocomplete. The first thing that I did was I created a new GitHub action, which I would call Kotlin test. This would happen every time that I pushed a new commit to GitHub. I then opened a new pull request for this branch because I wanted to be able to easily see the changes that I was making in real time and monitor which actions were running. Then I added the Kotlin linter, which also made me realize that having one workflow per job wasn't going to work out too well. I tried to find examples of one workflow kicking off another one, and while it seemed possible, it also felt overly complicated for what I wanted to do. So at this point, I consolidated both jobs into a single workflow, which I'd named CI CD. Then I added Google Cloud to my configuration. The first related job was to simply connect to my project and print out some basic info. This let me validate that the secrets on the repository were set up correctly. As luck would have it, they were. I also added a needs statement to this job's configuration. This instructed the workflow to only let that job run if the quality gates came back green. With that working, it was time to add a job for deploying the front end code to Google Cloud Storage. The worst part was Googling how to deploy static assets to Google Cloud Storage because I didn't write that step down when I learned how to do it. Quick random tangent, anytime that you learn something new that's vital to your project's deployment process, just write it down in your readme file. Trust me, you will thank yourself for that later. At this point, I had the front end code being deployed and the API was being containerized. So the final thing I needed to do was tell Google Cloud Run to deploy the new version of the API. I had always done this step through the UI, so finding the right command took a little bit of Googling, but similar to deploying the static assets, I had it working in about 20 minutes. So all of the pieces were put together, but we had a bit of a problem. Whenever I pushed a new change, the quality checks would run, and providing that they passed, I would then deploy my website. This would happen regardless of what branch I was currently on. This really wasn't what I wanted. What I really wanted to do was I only wanted to deploy changes if it was being built off of the main branch. And so with some help from Stack Overflow, I learned that GitHub Actions support having if statements. And I could add an if check to validate what branch I was currently on and if it wasn't on that branch, it just wouldn't run the job that was below it. Along with that needs clause, I added that if statement so that it would only deploy changes when I was on the main branch. At this point, I was done with the workflow, so I merged the pull request into main. I saw that the job ran and my website was deployed without an issue. I went ahead and made the repository public. A link to it will be in the description if you wanted to check it out. This is where I also noticed that the readme wasn't rendering some of my setup instructions correctly as as the angle brackets I used to signal that you should replace this value with your actual YouTube API key were being treated as HTML tags, so they weren't being displayed. So I only wanted to update my readme file, and doing that shouldn't cause an entire new website deployment. I was thankfully able to find a quick fix for this GitHub Actions support any sort of standardized CI tags, and so I was able to add a skip CI tag to my commit message, and then GitHub just didn't run anything at all. It was kind of nice. This still presented a bit of an issue though, because there are times where I will only update my front end code or I will only update my back end code. For example, if I'm only updating my front end code, 
I have no reason to do a full deployment of my API code. I can skip that entirely and I really should because it's just wasteful. The solution I found for this was adding another condition to the event trigger. Instead of running a workflow on push, I could run a workflow on push only when there were changes to a file or directory. One problem is that your event can only be defined at the workflow level instead of at the job level. So I updated the workflow to be named site CICD so it would only run when the code changed changes were made to the site directory. Then I moved the backend code to its own workflow that only ran when changes were made to the API directory. That is where I've decided to leave things for now. So my workflows are not completely perfect. I've still kind of introduced this sort of weird race condition where if I make changes to both my API and my front end at the same time, because the API side has many more checks, it takes much longer to run whereas the site pretty much deploys instantly. Realistically, I don't have that many visitors to my website, and honestly, it's going to be a bit rare that I'm going to be making changes both to the API and to the front end at the exact same time. I can also deprecate things and kind of leave existing functionality around for one or two releases. Overall, I have to say that I was impressed with GitHub Actions. If I was in the business of handing out reviews, I would probably give this like an eight out of 10. The main issue that I ran into was not being able to have a single workflow that would then allow me to only run jobs when things changed on certain paths. I think that would be really nice to have. I think there was a workaround, but it required a lot of copying and pasting code and I, I didn't really want to deal with that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime I upload another video like this one. Also in the description section, I will leave a link to my pull request where I added GitHub Actions. This will allow you to see my exact thought process, all of the trial and error that I went through. We also have a growing Discord community. I have a link for that in the description as well. And I recently started doing a weekly newsletter where I break down all of the cool stuff that happened in the last week in the tech and software industry. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, go over to engel.dev and sign up to my newsletter. That's it, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.